Welcome back to day six of 12 transitions between the 13 different energies that are coming in right now here at the end of the year way showing for the next year and also reflecting on these different dimensions of ourselves, the sacredness, the sacred powers within ourselves. So thank you for coming back. You know, when we think of spirituality or when we think of um, connecting with spirit, connecting with divine Wi-Fi, um, we often think that it's all positive, okay, that it has to be all blissy or wonderful or easy. And this is a huge yes. misconception. <laughs> you know, the, the, the power of sacredness is in recognizing that everything, that everything that we are experiencing is part of this experience and that we are exactly where we need to be. We need to be yes. right here experiencing this and in that virtue of not denying ourselves this in feeling into it and perhaps asking questions such as now yeah, what is all this unprocessed <laughs> stuff that we've learned about yesterday right that mm, can come to yeah. us in form of this critical inner voice or in form of this inner cringe or these niggles or you know this this abyss that we feel in front of us a lot of times it's really just the unknown if you think about it yeah i don't feel i yeah, know I feel like where i'm going at the moment so yeah when yeah that's that's the times when yeah. i feel quite sad and i'm going to say dark at times this is what we really need to understand here about the the I want to say the duality of really being present with ourselves is that when we choose to be present well then we also going to feel our fears or going to see uh, what is blocking us or what is holding us back and so for you to just simply say this right now Carmel is huge because in that acknowledging what your reality right now is and obviously, you know, in this circle here of people who are, you know, all interested in the, these deeper aspects and the deeper contemplation of these things, you have already given yourself permission to be there. Now the question is how to deal with this. So if you look deeper into it, you'll find that it's really how you just said it. It's the unknown. It's simply the fact that you don't know it, that you don't feel in control. And there is this part in you, in all of us, that wants to have certainty, that wants to have, you know, guarantees, that uh, wants to have a plan <laughs> or something like that. And, you know, this is really beautiful because it fits right into the, the theme that I've picked for today by doing the alignment. Um, it has to do with divine order, it has to do with trust, it has to do with I'm exactly there where I need to be. And instead of seeing or looking into the abyss in front of you, right, recognize the force that has gotten you here. You know, also with the, the gratitude that can come with this awareness and and realize that there is a bridge over all of this. Okay, this bridge might not have, you know, sort of an A, B, C, or one two, through 10 list of things that you need to do in order to succeed. All right, so you can have to be okay with perhaps making mistakes once in a while, but that these are exactly the ones that need it or that need to be made for you to arrive in that place that you feel like, okay, no matter what the abyss is, whether it's stuff that pulls me from the past, the pain of the past or the fears of the future, 
there is this pathway through all this that can carry me through all that and and that one is the one I need to focus on so the trick is not to become better at controlling the future or you know avoiding the past or coping with the present the trick is to know <laughs> that there is a part of you that that is on course if you will you know that leads you to the right path no matter what you do okay so something that pulls you into your future and that is something that uh, most of us forget especially when we get pulled into our control and the fear that comes with this is that we forget that where we're at is not really the product of our past pushing us here so our mind guards it that way it can only of course take the data of what was but then there are so many experiences in our lives to prove to us that there's no way that this was like sort of based on just you know the past this this that there's something that pulls me into a certain experience and yes if we want to see the glass half full then we call this bad karma okay if you want to see the glass half full i mean you know as opposed to half empty then we can also say all right so it is my karma that has gotten me here okay and all i really need to do is look at it and learn from it and mature through it and understand that i can trust in this in a compass that is pulling me towards my higher self my higher expression so spirituality allows us or spiritual awareness let's call it this way allows us to see the bridge and that bridge can help us to get past the abyss the darkness that we feel either through the pain of the past or the fear of the future so i don't know if these words are consoling for you right now but let's hear what other people feel about this um it is you know where we find ourselves is exactly what we need to experience and the only mistake we can really do is to ignore the prompting to look at these things and when i say things i don't mean you know we have to go into like the the uh, abyss of your childhood and all the trauma and all that i don't mean that i don't mean processing or over processing everything or turning every stone on the contrary if you look too deep in the abyss it starts pulling you into it all right so the longer you stare into the abyss the stronger the pull becomes so the trick is to find this center this balance in yourself to keep moving but to stay in balance okay and that balance is then what shows the way of most harmony for you even if in that very moment you know i I'm, i have this visual um of my son learning how to ride his bike these moments these first moments when i took the training wheels off right sort of it's it's this is a really important right of initiation for every child to suddenly be able to move forward without help without outer support right and it was terrible and he was crying and he was yelling and screaming and and as he was doing this <laughs> he started to ride his bike without training wheels so this also actually prompts something else a, a quote from Albert Einstein is that you can only find balance if you keep moving do you guys notice that that if you stop and and cut yourself off then you get out of balance that's when you lose your center so these analogies are just there for you karma for all of us to recognize that we are moving forward no matter what there is this evolution that is happening in us no matter what 
and we can be an active participant by becoming aware of it and using, utilizing all this that is learned to move into a higher expression or we can ignore it or reject it and get haunted by these ghosts of the past or you know over you know hyper vigilantly criticizing ourselves for you know perceived mistakes or flaws or imperfections so divine order the power of these energies that are coming in right now has a lot to do with trust but also with our active choice to keep moving all right so come on and everybody else do not be afraid you've made big big decisions in these past months and weeks that are naturally creating a new future for you and it's natural that you see this abyss right now of the unknown in front of you but that is exactly what will train okay discipline your mind to become able to imagine things beyond itself all right always see the past you know the comfort zone that it really isn't that comfy if you actually think about it as the limitation of your ego mind. Yeah, because the ego mind wants things to stay the same even if they're unhealthy or if they're bad for us. And so this energy that is reminding you of this abyss, this mixed bag that you're experiencing right now, is also reminding you of your choices and your life force that can, you know, if it shows up, can get past anything anything really all right so stay in that center by moving by keep moving come you know, don't allow yourself to get pulled into the darkness of your comfort zone which is mostly all the past and greet and embrace these new developments this new evolution Okay, that is happening for you right now. Great, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Kamal. Mm -hmm. Sheila is sharing, you, you're feeling similar to Carmel, exploring these same things as well. I just wanted to comment real quick, um, just to have my voice heard. <laughs> Um, and claim that because um, it's been I've been wanting to hide from it all so um, that sometimes is tempting to just stare into that abyss and it's a good word because it's like you can get sucked in <laughs> if you stare too long and um, so Carmel I, I think I feel what you feel and it's just exploring all of it and I just keep reminding myself just taking the next step which is showing up for myself is the best I can do right now. So. Yes, and sometimes that also applies to others. You know, when we uh, go through challenges with others, or when others go through challenges, then we will find out that, you know, what our mind wants to come up with as solutions or fixes is really nothing but our ego trying to, to, to go into control or be right or you know perhaps even go into this i told you so or something like this all right the righteousness uh, that we talked about yesterday that you know when other people go through things or when we go through things with other people it's the same thing sometimes there aren't solutions sometimes there aren't fixes sometimes there is just no such thing as a more perfect you know whatever relationship or life or whatever sometimes it's just about showing up sometimes it's just about being heard or just being present this is something that I had to learn as a healer that sometimes there is a power in just holding someone's hand or right now more so you know in ways like 
we are doing right now and listen and you know more or less just saying I feel you you know I feel that and there's a healing in that already the ego thinks it has to be a certain form it has to be in a certain way but if you really think about this nature doesn't work that way you know, if we take nature sort of as the, the ultimate representation of divine order. Nature works in this, in this constant sort of dance of creation, you know, where, the, where the, you know, maybe something gets out of balance a little bit and then it immediately sort of balances it out. And the whole point, you know, of evolution is really just to find this equilibrium where existence is natural, is organic, is effortless. So what we need to remember here is that, you know, all our efforts to consciously manifest our reality ultimately gear us towards effortlessness. And effortlessness means no resistance. It means to take things the way they are to see things the way they are. And it doesn't mean sucking up. That's not what I'm saying. It means seeing things for what they are. And even it's, if aspects of that are uncomfortable for us, that have to do with us looking at, you know, maybe the, the, our part in, in stuff, or, you know, some of our, what we perceive as imperfections, that's okay too. But, to not run away from showing up for it. Because if we cannot be there, all right, we cannot actually benefit from it. And that's why coping, all right, so trying to make things right, justifying things, or, you know, sort of becoming better at sucking things up, is not a solution, guys. That's your ego mind telling you, oh, I know how to control this. All I got to do is play this right, okay, when it comes to relationships, right? So if it's like this, then, you know, I better don't say anything. And maybe I can do this in a different way. Maybe I can do this through pleasing or through, you know, and, and, and get what I want in that way. These are just very abbreviated <laughs> versions of this covert control that we sometimes apply in our life. That, that has nothing to do with trust. When it comes to other people, guys, going into this place of respecting and honoring your own sacredness also allows you to do this for others. Not for them, but with them. And learn that some of the conflicts that you have or things that are not quite working well, that this other person is a true self too. You know, that they can, and you know, if, if I, all I really need to do is show up and be present without criticism or, I mean, sometimes we have to speak up in form of criticism, but for the most part, without trying to control this and trust in the other person's true self promptings, trust that the other person can work things out too. This is a huge revelation when it comes to issues with other people is that trusting in ourselves also shows us how we can learn to trust in others. But the core of that is us trusting in something in us, in a power in us. And I want to call this power divine order, not as law and order, but as sort of the order of things, the order of nature, how things go, the order that comes through everything that we experience here in this life, that we observe, the evolution, and also some of the chaos that comes with it. But at the same time, and you know, this is a bit the mixture of spirituality and quantum mechanics, at the same time, also the realization that ultimately we are all being pulled into this 
convergence into this centropy, right? Into, you know, going into the higher expression. So no matter how much we mess up as individuals or collective guys, on a long enough timeline, we are all gonna arrive there. How long this takes, how painful this is, whether we experience this as pain, as inevitable pain of transition, say, or, you know, crisis or whatever, or suffering. That depends on our alignment. That depends on how we internalize the experience, or in many cases, whether or not we're even willing to internalize our I didn't want to leave this out because Annette here shared that she had the opposite feeling this morning. She felt very confident and knowing where to go. Okay, I felt the same way, Annette. And I'm full of energy. You know, crazy really because what I have been doing here in these last couple of days, um, you know, even the invisible things, is so much bigger than my ego mind could imagine, okay? My ego mind said, oh, keep it low, keep it low. You're going to have to do the, the 12 days of sacred self. You're going to have to do the forecast. You have a, a transmission marathon going on. And keep it low. Don't do anything. Don't, don't do more and more and more. And out of all this showing up for myself, suddenly emerged this trust in me that everything I'm doing, everything that I have always done is gearing me into a certain direction. Yes, and the other Annette is sharing that you have had conscious experience in these last couple of days of how you can transcend fear, the fear of expressing yourself. That's wonderful, guys. Because ultimately, that is what it's all about. That is why we do this. I'm going to have to move with you guys because for some reason our gardeners decided to come a day early. So I'm going to move with you here to the inside. Oh, serious sharing that was quite similar. Moving on and gaining speed. Yes, and sometimes we have to do what I just did. We just have to accept the fact that it's not going to change. <laughs> it's a bit dark here. And just simply move on. All right? Because we can't go against that which is present. All right? So I'm not going to ruminate why this is. I'm not going to stay there very long. I'm just going to move on, okay? This is practical spirituality in motion right here, okay? To not get angry or disappointed or, oh my God, or stressed out about it. To just say, okay, that sucks. <laughs> you know? uh, but it's nothing that I cannot transcend. So it's cool that you guys are starting to have these experiences for yourself. I want to invite you now to go into this deeper energy alignment with yourself. I've posted the, just right now, the alignment here for you in the thread. So if you want to uh, check this out, uh, it's always better for you to do this with your own voice and uh, hearing this in your own head. Okay, so lean back, you can turn off your video. Divine Order I am one with my sacred self. Pardon me, that is unchanging 
eternal and infinite. The essence and source of my existence. I embrace change as the evolutionary path of my being and trust in my true self to guide me to unfold my highest potential. I accept all limitations as learning experiences. I forgive myself and others for the innocence and ignorance of the past, but feel nothing but gratitude for new opportunities to grow. Darkness has no power in me. as I am no longer afraid of the unknown. Due to my choice to align to divine consciousness in me, I understand now that there is a power in me that balances and neutralizes all darkness in me. prevents me from losing myself in myself or losing myself in others. When I feel into my sacred self, I know that my spirit is exactly where it must be. So that I can experience the power of truth, love and choice for myself. I am ready to embrace my responsibility to act as co-creator of my reality. I trust in divine order as I trust in the sacredness of spirit within me. In all dimensions and times. Thank you. It's truly amazing to me how 
we all pick up on the same energies. This alignment, I wrote this, I don't know, four hours ago. Not even specifically tuning into your personal energies here. This is not like a transmission. It's it's really just a coming together. Janet is, Annette is sharing vibrations strong on back of the heart area. So when we feel that our attention is guided to its certain parts of us or our energy, in energy work we learn that this is typically a sign that we need to do something right there. So the back of your heart area is, from an energy work standpoint, all these energies that are behind you and this can also mean other people's energies and there is something about staring into this abyss maybe you can follow me here just the visual of this when you lean into the abyss right when you lean into this this gravitation of your own darkness your energy body goes slightly in front of you this can also happen if we ruminate too much about the future. Then our whole entire energy body is a little ahead of ourselves. It leaves the back unprotected. It goes out of balance in that way, which then in energetic terms means that we become more susceptible to other people's energies or, you know, judgments that are coming in or collective energies or our own past so that's really important that when you feel something like that all right then just take your whole energy if you will if you can do this if you have the energy awareness your trans codes i train people how to do this and move it further into your center again Bring yourself back into balance. Bring yourself back into harmony. Become an active co-creator of your reality. There's obviously, you know, much bigger things that that can be changed that way, you know, like how we experience our reality and how we experience others in our reality or those that we interact with. But the most important part is what you've already worked out. It's showing up. And when we show up, when we align our energy to our center. Well, even if you're not familiar with energy work, your energy will naturally do this. It will naturally rebalance, recalibrate itself. Yeah, Sheila, it's just a reminder for those of you who who are familiar with energy work, just, just remember that when you think too much into the future, when you try to control things too much, or when you like literally sort of, you know, staring into the abyss, your energy goes out of balance and there are things that you can do. Okay, so if you want to shift your experience in the moment, always see this as a shift of energy first. Even if your ego mind uh, thinks that it's, it's a bunch of BS, it doesn't matter. Just do it anyway. You know, just remind yourself to go back into the center of your center and your energy will follow that. So this is the power of alignment. This is why I talk so much about alignment and why I put so much effort into creating alignments every day. Valerie, you are reporting a lot of pressure here in... Oh, in your solar plexus so that is here that is the third chakra the third energy center and your third eye here so this these when these two pressures come in you know as in like 
capturing your attention. It means that there is something that you don't want to see because your third eye is the one that opens you up for this broader perspective. And if your ego resists that, okay, then you'll feel a pain there. So a lot of people have been having this, this chest pressure and this, uh, you know, sternum pressure all the way to uh, difficulties breathing and um, feeling this uh, this tense uh, diaphragm in us all right this all has to do with these collective developments right now that you know inform us about uh, you know a new era there's a, there's a lot of new things coming in right now and the ego doesn't like this and so it resists it okay it's obviously not the only reason there can also be medical reasons for that but how else do you explain that we're experiencing this as a phenomenon worldwide and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with COVID, all right? This is something that people experience energetically. So Valerie, for you, all this really means is that you need to become more aware of where you, well, not trying to see things, uh, see things the way they are. And it's okay to admit that to yourself. It's okay to say, okay, you know, there are some things that I don't want to handle yet, or I don't feel ready. It's totally okay to say to yourself, I'm not ready to deal with this yet. But don't ignore the fact that it's there. That is the fallacy of our self-deception, to pretend it's not there. And that comes with a lot of resistance. And we often experience this as this duality in us. You know, where we have this back and forth in us. Yes, I hope this helps to deal with the dualities of being in the now. Thank you all for being vulnerable in this voluntary way. and and thus contributing to all of us healing. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.